We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. And welcome back to building the Afforda plane. This week, we're working a little bit under the plane where we have some important controls. Now, because we're not building from a kit, we can't just go grab parts and install them. We make the parts. So best that we get building right now. And so here are most of the parts we're going to be using for our control system below the fuselage too. We have a one inch rod, this is 38 and a half inches, and then a four and a half inch insert, seven eight, so this will slide in the end. And down here we have 11 and a half inch, seven eighths inch tube insert. This will also slide inside the tube. Then we have a short one inch piece of tubing and then we have a angle which will help us connect the pieces. Now this is a C channel, one and a quarter all the way around because that gives us one inch inside and then I believe two and a half inches across. Check your plans. And then our two bearings made out of angles. So let's start fabricating these pieces and we can install them for our aileron controls. One of the parts we need to fabricate for our controls is a pair of brackets. Now these are made from two by two angle, quarter inch thick, and obviously two by two for the flange but then also two inches across the other direction and in one of the flanges a one inch circle one inch opening this is where our tube will pass through so we need to create a pair of these now it's probably easiest to create these brackets by drawing them out while they're still on the full length of angle because now you have something to hold on to when it's in the drill press and I've created the pilot holes for our one inch holes that we're going to create and I'll enlarge these because when it comes time to using our step drill it's always nice having as large a holes as possible already created before we go ahead and drill using the drill press to open these up to one inch holes so I'll drill about a half inch hole using a conventional drill bit in here and then use a step drill like this that goes up just slightly over one inch being very careful to stop when I hit the one inch mark. Now the steps on these drills will almost take us to quarter inch which is the thickness here so I may have to turn this over to finish off the final size. So just have a one inch tube handy as you're making your final hole to make sure you don't go too far and stop before it's too late. It should move freely without too much slop, but it should definitely move freely. I'll finish the other one and then I can cut these off. Now we should note that the steps on a step drill often aren't very tall. And keep in mind that this is quarter inch thick. So as you're getting close to the final size, you're probably going to need to turn it around and hit it from the other direction 
in order to get the full size. Otherwise, this is so thick that you'll end up getting two sizes, a big size and a smaller size, because we really don't have a quarter inch worth of blade for each size. And we have our two holes. And we can go cut these off now. A hole saw like this is better for thicker materials. You just want to be careful and test it out. For example, mine had just a little bit too much wobble and it made the hole larger than I really wanted. So test it out on some scrap aluminum. This one did the best job of keeping the hole the right size. However, it's best to drill a big of hole as you can in advance because if you let this start from the smallest to the largest it can wander off the center that you expect the hole to be located so they each have their limitations but they both can do a very good job now I have removed the seat mine came off with four nuts it was very easy so that it's easier to see and work on the lower control tube. Now our focus at the moment is mounting that front bearing. Check your, check your plans. I believe that is three and a half inches from the cross tube and then centered on the bottom fuselage tube. I have it clamped in place just to show where it's going and this will get two bolts which will run from the top down to the bottom through the bearing angle base and I'm going to have my bolts three quarters of an inch from each edge just like the plans show and here's an underneath shot showing the three and a half inches of spacing and I'll remove the clamp and drill the two holes. For drilling the holes I'm going to use the same technique as we did with the gussets. I'm going to locate my two bolt holes on the bearing. First one is three quarters from the front edge. The next one is three quarters and that leads a half inch to the other edge. I'm going to go ahead and drill these one eighth inch and then use this as a template to back drill the top and bottom of the tube by simply holding this in place and marking with a punch into the tube and then drill all the holes just like we did with the gussets on the fuselage even though this will be mounted underneath the fuselage tube I've located the same position on top I will place this in the proper position and then use my punch through the two holes to mark the upper holes. I'll then reverse it, clamp it to the bottom and do the same thing with my punch and I will simply then drill all four holes and everything should match real nice for our bolts that will go through. And the bolts were installed upside down because of the clearance for the tube going through the bearing. They would have been interfering with the tube if we reversed them. Now the rear bracket is going to mount in the same way further back on the tube in this area here. Now the plans call for four and a half inches from the back of this tube, which is right here, going forward. Now I've noticed that there's a bolt going through and it's going to be awfully close. So I'm going to move it from four and a half to five inches, just adding another half inch 
going forward, just for safety. So it's going to go approximately right here. And of course, it's in line with the front bearing. And same thing, I'm going to pre-drill this and then drill upwards and this time just use a long drill bit and keep everything at 90 degrees because it's going to get a little trickier to drill from the top with this in place. And on top, and here's the torque tube installed. We j simply slide it into the two bearings. Now it'll be easier to assemble the fittings on each end of the torque tube while it's on the bench, but keep in mind in order to slide it through the bearings we need to have a free end open so that we can slide it out. Now we're going to add some fittings to our long torque tube and at the front end we're going to utilize this fitting which is of course inch and a quarter all the way around which provides one inch inside, perfect for these tubes. And we're going to slide this inside here. And we want the top tangent to be even with the edge there. We can roll that into place. And because this is a one inch tube, we can draw down half an inch from the top to mark the location for an AN3 bolt. So we'll start with an eight inch hole, half inch down and centered left and right. Then our small tube will enter into the side, pushed all the way up. So this will be 90 degrees and again, one inch so that half inch from the edge will put us to the center of the tube and we'll place that centered between these two locations. So two bolts going right through the center of both tubes. Now it'd be best to drill this on the drill press for a nice straight drill and this is easy enough to get onto your drill press. I have marked the locations of my two eighth inch holes centered half inch down but we first need to insert our four and a half inch seven eighths inch insert into the end prior to drilling and this sleeve or insert really strengthens this up and now we can place this inside now if you're afraid that this goes too far in, remember we can put our tape measure from the other end and push this all the way down prior to drilling just to make sure it hasn't gone too far in there. And again we want that nice and even with the top. To the drill press. And here's what I mean by pushing that insert all the way down. And then we can now open this to 3 16 and take it apart and deburr it and then insert our bolts. Now I've stand this up on end because we need one more hole down here, half inch up, three sixteenths, and we want it perpendicular. So by doing something like this, 
we can easily find the perpendicular mark and then one half inch up and then I'm going to take this to the drill press and get a nice straight shot through it this direction and open up to three sixteenths and now we're all done with this end of the stick let's go now work on the other end we need to build the bell crank we're going to create the bell crank out of a piece of C channel this is one and a quarter all the way around which gives us one inch inside and the plan show eight and a half inches from end to end now we have to do some trimming of this to turn it into the final product the full size template is shown in your plans and basically what's going to happen is we're going to take some off of each of the sides using our bandsaw and the templates make it pretty clear what to take away so I'm going to paste up or tape up because I cut these out of the plans make sure you verify with a ruler that your printer is printing out properly otherwise you can adjust it right before you print whether it's actual size or a little bit bigger or smaller but I'm going to tape this in place and then outline with a pen exactly how this is to look so one it's going to go on one side and one is going to go on the other side and then the third side will become pretty obvious I'm going to start off with the end view and that's on the back of the channel and using this template and basically I've simplified it it's the lines I want to cut on I don't have to worry about I'll worry about the curve and the holes later but basically I want to cut on these lines on the bandsaw and see what we get and here's what we got one cut and the other cut I left this piece on so you could see what gets removed and how that works so we are left with this sometimes it's hard to picture on paper what's going to happen when you make the cut but basically that sliced off that piece and this is what we have now what's left is to fashion the bottom and of course we'll clean up uh, the edges and the bottom is going to use our other template and here we go this will be for the bottom now the reason I know it doesn't go like this is because of the dotted line is the other edge there and also in the bottom will be a hole and that hole will match up with a hole up here for the pipe to attach the pipe to so basically I'm going to trace these diagonals on here to get our other cut and here's our two lines we're gonna cut now because we really can't cut from this side because it wouldn't sit on our table very nicely I transferred the lines to the bottom side so that this can sit flat on the on the bandsaw table and not wobble as opposed to sitting over here and having a problem and here is the rough cut this needs a lot of cleaning up but basically your the tube the torque tube will go inside of here and we'll have our two holes and this will rotate with the torque tube I'm going to clean it up sand and use the scotch bright wheel to 
make this look a little more decent. Rounded corners and clean up this mess here. And here is the completed piece and I got a, a little more buffed up here. Any inside corners you should round off with a file. Right there. And be sure to take a look on Patreon as I can show you some really neat techniques on polishing up aluminum really fast. And it's nice for making parts. The idea here is that our one inch round tube will go inside here. So we're going to need a hole centered, a number 30 hole coming out the other side and going through our tube so everything goes right through the center and then and then here and here we're going to have a number 30 hole where we attach our controls as this rotates over to the drill press we go there's our mark, half inch in from the edge. And our marks here. I chose this location because this gives us a good quarter inch from the edge up here and over here. Here is our torque tube. Now with it standing on end like we have, be sure to draw a line down the very top or the bottom as it is and then something we need to do is be sure to insert the sleeve or insert this is 11 and a half inches 7 8 tubing and it's going to go in all the way flush and then we can take our horn and put it on all the way and move it till we get the center line in the hole that we drilled that comes out the other side. Confirm that it is pressed in all the way to the end and then we can drill through this hole and then turn it around and drill through the other hole. And then this will be opened up to 3 16 for a bolt. And here's the horn, the bell crank installed. And the holes in the ears. Now remember we need to remove this bolt in order to slide this into the bearings from the rear going forward and then put this back on after it's all the way forward. And we have one more piece to look at and those are the stops that prevent this from moving back and forth while in the bearings. We need to create a couple of bearing stops. Now all we need to do that is to obtain a PVC pipe union coupler. This one I believe is three quarters. The inner diameter is one inch which means it fits very nicely over a one inch tube. Now it won't go through because there's a stop in there for joining two pieces of pipe together. So what we want to do is to cut off using your bandsaw a piece. It can be this thickness or it can be thicker, your choice. So one coupler will give you two pieces easily. And then you want to drill a hole in your ring. One here. The idea is that 
when we slide this over the pipe, like that, and when we have it in position, we can simply drill through our hole and into the pipe and then set a aluminum rivet. I'm choosing aluminum because these can be drilled out in under 10 seconds if you need to remove it. Drill the head off with your drill. It's not stainless steel, it's aluminum. It'll pop off very easy and then you punch out the center and it's off. So very reusable and can take it on and off very quickly. So we want to create two of these so that when we install our control rod we can capture the pipe, the tube, so that it can't move back and forth against the bearing surfaces. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. So let's install our torque tube. Now all we have to do is remove the nut and bolts and pull this off because this we have to slide in from the rear all the way forward and then reinstall this. So let's go over to the fuselage. Okay, we're at the fuselage and we have our completed torque tube. First step is to slide a bushing on the end. Then we're going to slide it into the rear bracket. Go all the way forward to the front bracket, then another bushing, and then our control horn. And we just simply line up the hole, and we can reinsert our nut and bolt here. With our bolt installed, plans call for, I believe, a half inch between the back of the cross member and the front of our horn. So we'll measure that and with that in place we will push our bushing back to the stop all the way to the bearing and then drill into the tube and set a rivet and that will prevent this from going back any more than the half inch. Then at the other end without moving this bar We want to slide this bushing all the way forward and drill and set an aluminum rivet and that will prevent it from going forward. And that's the purpose of these two plastic bushings to hold the tube from moving forward and aft. And that completes the installation of the aileron torque tube. Well, that's good progress. Next time, we got to add a stick so that we can tie all of this stuff together. So, until next time, everyone, back to building. <laughs>